Hey everyone, I just want to talk about the ability to think in high resolution and low resolution and the ability to think very short term and very long term. Um, one of the biggest problems I have with myself is that I think too long term and then I have too, mo too many moving parts and then things end up falling apart. So it especially falls apart when I try to involve too many people or involve people that I'm trying to like you know build relationship with either partnership with and people don't either have the motivation or the, or the staying power or etc so the ability to think very deeply on a on like low resolution high resolution it's very profound and what I mean is this so let's just I'll use a couple examples Jordan Peterson talks about low resolution and high resolution right so, for example, I'll give many analogies. So the first one, let's just say, is you think about today, next month, next year, and five years from now, and what you want to do with your life, right? So that's low resolution, high resolution. You can also think of it in terms of technology or terminology, right? So, for example, uh, water is a generic word, right? But what is water? Well, if you're a chemist, or you study basic chemistry or high school chemistry, you know it's H2O, right? Or salt is sodium bi bicarbonate. So you want to think about it in those terms, like salt, there's a chemical makeup of salt. And from salt, there is um, ions and there's electrons and there's, you know, base and there's acid, right? And so the ability to just like be very flexible with your mind in and out is very powerful, right? And I am starting to be more disciplined in thinking like that. I know I'm very disciplined when it comes to martial art and when it comes to design. I can think like from very far out into very close in, right? I will look at composition, typography. I will look at theme. I will look at uh, thematic um, inspiration. You know, so I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in and out, zoom in and out all the time. But when it comes to like planning and execution and success I think way too long term right and and what happened is sometimes the moving parts will fall apart and then I'm left not finishing the project or not being as successful as I could but sometime when it, it when it does when things do come together I'm like hyper hyper like super well done like like super accomplished like when I plan for things and it all comes together, I blow the competition away. But when it doesn't come together, I fall flat on my face. Like literally, I can't even like get to the finish line. And so I am trying to be more disciplined in that area. Um, Elon Musk talks about first principle, the ability to break things down to the lowest common denominator, the lowest core movement, the lowest thing that allow that thing to execute and move, right? So, for example, uh, this weekend, I'll be teaching a Koshin Judo class. And so Koshin Judo, if you read the kanji, it means technical school, right, of Judo training. But people who don't understand kanji or hanzi, the Chinese writing, they will think Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu came from Koshin Judo. Or they would think that Koshin Judo came before uh, Judo because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and they think the word Jiu Jitsu predated Judo, right? So there's all these confusion. And if all they, if all they did was study the kanji, and they'll be like, wait a minute, this is like technical Judo. Like it's Judo that's taught to high school students and college students. Right, because traditional judo is just really rough on the body. You know, imagine if you're a beginner, and you're getting slammed over and over again. People can't handle that. So think of it as like folk style wrestling, right? That's the type of wrestling that we do in America. No other country does it because we developed the style of wrestling so that uh, middle school students can train in it. So um, this Saturday, I'll be teaching Koshin judo. I'll be teaching basically the nawaza portion of judo, the ground portion of judo, because it's much easier on the kids, and also the mats are not very good. 
So why is this important? The ability to think up and down allows you to not be um, deceived. The ability to think very high res and low res. A lot of times we attribute success or failures to a small window in time. Maybe we're a failure now, but when you zoom out, we're part of the up and down cycle. Maybe we're successful now, but in five years time, we fall flat on our face because we're in the up cycle and we think everything we're doing will be sustainable. You know, it's like the guy who takes steroids, right? He, he looks so buff and everything, and then he pays the price. Like his shelf life is like five years and he's, he's dead, you know, you know? And so you pay the price sometimes when you don't factoring in like how long something will take, how long it takes to be successful, how long it takes to execute. Um, I've been struggling for the longest, longest time, right? And then I got this job. And this job utilized all the skill set that I've been um, developing in the last 15, 20 years, right? And if someone told me, hey, you know what? Don't worry, just keep on struggling. You're going to get a really good paying job. You're going to get a really good job with 401k. You're on salary. There's no one overlooking your shoulder. You have your own office. I'll be like, whoa, that's so awesome, right? And I was struggling so bad. Like, I, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure if I could do it. And I realized that my personality and the way I look toward the future allowed me to have the skill because I kept on pushing myself. I kept on acquiring different skills. Even now, I'm trying to study to be at an executive C-suite level so that when I have a chance to move up, I will take that opportunity because I don't have the money, the time, or the desire to go back to school and get my MBA. But I'm sure there's ways to go about it so that I can show to someone when the C-suite opportunity comes up that I have that ability, I can do it. So I'm thinking very long term. Um, almost every night I'm designing because I'm trying to develop my aesthetic even tighter so that if there's an art director job that comes up, I'm ready to seize it. So getting back to my point, think of everything you do and see if you can zoom in and zoom out. You know, if you can zoom in and zoom out, zoom out, it means you have a very good understanding of that topic, that subject matter. If you can zoom in, zoom out, it means that it's very hard to deceive you. It's very hard because you have a very holistic look of everything. Some people get deceived because they can't see the forest with the tree and vice versa. And so different business opportunity comes up, different get rich scheme come up and people all they see is the money and they don't understand that's not how things work. Or a different opportunity comes up and all people see is the hard work but they don't understand that if you do it right it's going to snowball really quick. Anyways, I am just really tired. Um, just trying to get ahead. And I have an addiction to just working in terms of like working on what I'm passionate about and not getting enough sleep. And I'm going to front load it. So going forward, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to bed early. And if I have the energy, I'll get up and work on my side hustle. If I don't, I don't. Instead of staying up all night, working on my side hustle, and then just being super exhausted to the point where I'm about to fall over. And I think sometime you work late into the night, you're not, 
you end up pushing yourself really hard in the day and then you're just dragging yourself along and it's just super exhausting.